Okay. Mic check one, two, one, two. It's the Y2K collector and we have to, we must, we cannot proceed without discussing GameStop. And I know you're tired of it. I know you're probably tired of all of the GameStop videos, the videos talking about how GameStop's attempt at creating retro stores has been an utter failure thus far. But I think there's something a little bit more nefarious at play. And I've actually been mentioning this in some of my old older videos, those of you who have watched them in the past. And I think this topic definitely warrants some discussion. Also, I'm going to be sharing just a little bit of what you can expect to see during the last quarter of 2024, because summer's over folks uh it's pumpkin spice and everything nice as you already know the fall is here and so without wasting any more time i want to talk about something that has always been a concern of mine when it comes to gamestop but it was actually confirmed to me over this past week now before we dive into that uh just to let you all know we are two weeks away from pro week uh, which means that GameStop is going to be launching some of their better deals. Um, uh, usually you're going to be able to get a little bit more when you trade in your video games. Also, when it comes to pre-owned games, there should be uh, some type of deal going on, either a four under 10 for 20, a four under 20 for 40, or some type of buy to get one. Now, during one of the last buy to get ones, I believe all PlayStation games were excluded. So that's a bit of a bummer. And hopefully they don't put any types of weird stipulations on the promotions that they have during Pro Week coming up. But again, Pro Week is on its way. So be prepared for all of the deals and steals that you may be able to take advantage of. But now on to something that was confirmed uh, for me while I was at a GameStop discussing the upcoming uh, Pro Week. And one of the things that I mentioned when I was in the store was the changing in pricing, price, the pricing of certain games. And one of the employees actually confirmed to me, so every time you walk into a GameStop, you may or may not have noticed that the person behind the register may have had like what looks like a strip of uh price price stickers right um and sometimes every once in a while you'll see the employees they'll be working on the computer and then uh, a strip of pricing stickers will print out from the computer and while yes a lot of times um, those stickers will be to label the new games that are coming into the store a lot of times what those stickers are are for in fact price changes that can occur at any point during the day that is right so at any point during any day if gamestop decides that they want to change the price of a game all they do is i guess they send out a notification throughout their system it sends an alert to the folks that are in the store and then the employees at the star store are supposed to print out all of the pricing update stickers and then place those over the older older pricing stickers for some of their pre-owned games and my mind was blown um, at the fact that gamestop is actually changing prices in real time now i don't know what they're using to determine the prices for the games that they're updating and changing in real time but i have seen where um i'll go into a gamestop and I'll use a game, for instance, Nier. Um, I recently picked up a copy of Nier on the PlayStation 3 when GameStop had its four under 20 for 40. And at the time, Nier was going for $19. Now that same day, I went to another GameStop and another store had Nier for $24.99. So I was really confused. I was like, why is, why is it $24.99 at this store, but $19.99 at another store? And what I'm starting to realize is that because GameStop is changing the prices um, of their games in real time, um, it's really dependent upon how on it the employees at the stores are. So some employees, they may not be on top of their job and they may 
they just may not be you know updating the pricing on their games which is why you may go to one store and you might see a game for ten dollars and you go to another store and that same game is for fifteen dollars it could be that the game is actually fifteen dollars it's just that the first store didn't actually reprint the updated pricing stickers to relabel the game and i asked the employee i said i don't understand that like why do they do that and they were like well you know they typically tend to do um those midday changes right around the time when they're doing a promotion so if you've ever wondered why a game that's normally i don't know 9.99 is all of a sudden 12.99 <laughs> when gamestop is doing their four under 10 for 20 it's because GameStop is purposely increasing the prices at games for during certain times to avoid allowing customers to be able to maximize and fully maximize on the promotions that they have. And what that tells me is that GameStop isn't really trying to just offer a general promotion so that gamers can take advantage and, and just, you know, buy the games that they want to play. No, GameStop is creating promotions that allow them to move inventory out that would not sell otherwise and forgive me I, my neighbor's dog will not shut the hell up so i apologize but yeah so gamestop is um you know that's what they're doing and when the employees at the store actually confirmed that to me it was a little bit disheartening because that just kind of tells me that gamestop is doing pretty much what some mom and pop shops do they're just doing it in a much more sneaky and albeit in a much more efficient way. And what do I mean? So if you've ever gone to a, if you're a retro collector or if you buy retro games, um, you've probably gone into a mom and pop shop where the games were not labeled at all. Or maybe you've gone into a thrift store, maybe you've gone to a flea market and you've gone to a place where the video games are not priced. And um, when you find games that you actually want and you bring them to whoever's selling the games, they'll say you know you might ask them okay well uh what's the cost of the game and um you know they'll pull out their phone and then they'll start researching the price of the game and any collector any person who goes out and buys retro games will tell you that that is probably the most annoying experience you can have when shopping for retro games because you want to go into a store and you you know if you go into a store and you have a budget you want to be able to pick out the games that you want to buy based on your budget there's nothing more frustrating than picking up maybe a handful of games only to find out that you can only afford two of them based on the budget that you had preset because the owner of the store or whoever's selling the game is going on the most recent sold data sometimes they're not even using price charting sometimes they're just looking at they're just going on eBay, they're finding the most expensive listing and then basing it off of that when that's not reality. So I think it's a little bit um, sad that GameStop is actually, you know, applying this approach as they enter into the retro scene because it just, it already puts a, a damper on an already weak rollout of this whole retro program. In my opinion, I think they need to just forget this whole retro stores thing. I think it's a complete and absolute waste of time. I think GameStop is better off allowing each store to have their own retro section. That just makes more sense. Why? Because most stores already carry what GameStop's, GameStop considers retro to begin with. Um, and we all know that GameStop considers Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, Wii, and Wii U games as retro. And if you go into most GameStops, that's what you're going to see. You're going to see PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, Wii and Wii U games. You hardly ever see any cartridge based games unless you're, you know, unless they just took a trade in or you actually happen to go to a store where the surrounding stores are mailing all of their retro items to that specific store. So, I mean, you know, they're better off just allowing each store to manage their own retro inventory they need to get rid of this whole shipping of games to different stores thing because it just it clogs up the process and honestly you're, you're just making it more i think it makes it more difficult for people in general to just purchase retro games um yeah and so when you add on to the fact that one the the rollout has been weak two their retro inventory seems extremely limited um 
And then three, they're, they're price matching and not in a good way. They're, they're increasing prices on the fly based on whatever the, you know, going rate is. It just, it's starting to remove, you know, any ad, you know, any advantage that you would get from buying games at GameStop. And I think honestly, their pricing is all over the place. I recently watched a video from Jacob R who reviewed his visit to, um, a GameStop and you know pretty much both of the games that he purchased were above market value um, granted he did get a copy of Legend of Dragoon um, complete in box in what looked like pretty decent condition but it was still overpriced um, because I think he got the greatest hits version so you know all it's telling the folks that are actually looking for this stuff is that they're better off shopping on eBay now and I want to say probably up until maybe this past the past two weeks, I felt like I was striking gold at GameStop. I, you know, this past summer I cleaned up. I mean, spring until this summer, like I want to say even before then, I would say last year and definitely the first half of this year, I was killing the retro scene when it came to GameStop before they made it like quote unquote official and had this whole official retro program. There were plenty of retro games that you were able to find at GameStop and you were able to get some really great deals because they weren't hyper hyper focused on these types of games. And because they're now hyper focused on selling these games and, you know, building this inventory, they're also hyper focused on the price of these games. And so they're, you know, they're trying to price match to, I guess, you know, maximize sales or maximize revenue. And I'm not knocking them for that at all. But I think they were doing fine with the way they had it before. Just carry the games. And if you have them, you have them. If you don't, you don't. But there's nothing more deflating than going to a store, expecting them to have retro. And you walk in there and you see four PS3 games, a handful of Xbox 360 games and two Wii U games. That's going to frustrate you because, you, you know, especially if you live in a town where GameStop is your only option for retro gaming. There are no like mom and pop retro game stores. You know, you're putting your faith that GameStop is actually going to have this inventory that they're claiming to have. And so when you find out that at any point in the day they can increase the price on you, that's just that's lame. That's just a complete bummer. So um, I don't know if this is something that they're going to continue to do. I don't know if they're also going to apply this method to their new games as well. But um, I appreciate the employees that actually confirmed for me that this is something that they're actually doing. Um, and yeah, that really honestly makes them no better than the folks at the flea market, the folks at the yard sales who just go about pricing their stuff based on the last sold item or the highest listing that they are found uh, that they found on eBay. So let me know what you think about that, because that is not fun at all. But in other news, um, a few other things that I want to talk about. So, um, you know, going towards the end of this year, again, selling is the name of the game for me. So I am going to be selling. So I'm excited for pro week, not so much for what I'm going to be able to buy more so than, you know, more than what I'm going to be able to sell. I have a few consoles that I plan on getting rid of during pro week. I have a bunch of games that I plan on getting rid of during pro week, and I may either just cash out or use that to pick up some other items that I may just flip. Um, I may like, you know, take advantage of the trade in credit um, promotion while simultaneously taking advantage of any buy to get ones, things of that nature. Um, and I really want to start kind of focusing on co like genuine collector pieces um, and going for some more of the rare stuff. I'm also uh, going to see if I can complete some of my more rare games. Like I have a cop copy of Metal Warriors. Um, I have some like rare Super Nintendo games, some really rare Sega Genesis games. I want to see if I can complete those. Um, and I may even try to look for some sealed stuff. Um, I may look into getting some things graded. Um, I've been watching a lot of, um, King of Collectibles. If you haven't checked that show out on Netflix, check it out. It's a pretty cool show. Um, they, you know, they talk about collectible items and it's just amazing how many, people are actually into collectibles and collecting. So that's right up my alley because I, you know, I am a collector. I'm the Y2K collector. So that works out well for me, but I'm definitely going to be kind of shifting my focus, um, consolidating the collection a little bit, um, and kind of, you know, adding more higher end collector pieces, 
um, by selling some some more of the lower end stuff. So let me know what you think about this whole change in GameStop. Also, let me know what your collecting goals are for the fourth quarter um, and what you think about just this this whole approach that GameStop is taking to their pricing. I'm interested to know what you think. It's the Y2K Collector. Hopefully you had a great Saturday and I'll catch you in the next video. Take it easy.